It's therefore with great hope that I declare COVID-19 over as a global health emergency. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the World Health Organization declaring the C-19 global emergency over with officially. Now, welcome to three years ago. Welcome to Common Senseville. Welcome to this was never a global emergency. Well, I guess it was. It was a global panic. People were afraid of what this thing was. But I think for a long time, we've known what the risks were who was the most at risk. We have known what's going on for a very long time. Okay. So I think the whole emergency thing is a wrap is, is over with. Now, before I get into anything, we have an article, we got a full video before I get into anything, let's watch the full clip from your man, Tedros, uh, the leader of the world health organization. If you want to see the clip in full without my commentary link, as always will be in the description. If you're on IG, Visit the link in the bio, go to the corresponding article on the website. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. It's therefore with great hope that I declare COVID-19 over as a global health emergency. However, that does not mean COVID-19 is over as a global health threat. Last week... Man, for real, we're not, we're not even really trying to hear it. You know, we're not even really trying to hear it. We're, we're pretty much over all of this nonsense a lot of pseudoscience, a lot of experiments and things of that nature have been conducted upon global, like the, the citizens of the, in the entire world, everybody, every country has been a big experiment. So we're not really trying to hear all this stuff, Tedros. COVID-19 claimed live every three minutes. And that's just the deaths we know about. As we speak, Thousands of people around the world are fighting for their lives yeah, in okay. intensive care sure, units. Sure, sure, right, right, right. And millions more continue to live with the debilitating effects of post-COVID-19 condition. Mm -hmm. This virus is here to stay. It's still killing. And it's still changing. Okay, so it's still killing. It's here to stay. All this and that is still changing. So it's no longer an emergency. Why? Like, why? I don't understand. If it's still so deadly, then why is it no longer an emergency? You tell me, Tedros, or are you going to get into that at all? You're just going to put stuff out there to scare people, but at the same time say it's no longer an emergency? I don't understand. The risk remains of, a new, of new variants emerging that cause new surges in cases and deaths. Okay, so, so that's that from your man Tedros from the World Health Organization. Here's an article from CNN. Uh, you know, hey, CNN, it is what it is. If if they say it's over and they're talking about it in a certain kind of way, then you know that that's that's pretty much what they've been given. They've been given the order from up high to say that it's a wrap. OK, so, you know, I'm not making stuff up. You know, it's not a deep fake. This is what it is. And today's Friday, May 5th, 2023. So this is something that's happening right now as I'm speaking. You see the the top here. COVID-19 is no longer a global health emergency. The World Health Organization said on Friday, WHO's International Health Regulations Emergency Committee discussed the pandemic on Thursday at its 15th meeting on C-19. And WHO Director General Tedros at Hanum Gabrigius concurred that the public health emergency of the International Concern or PHEIC declaration should end. For more than a year, the pandemic has been on a downward trend. Okay, it's been on a downward trend, but yet it's still this big thing that's killing everybody. And people are dying in the hospital. It's so weird. Anyway, quote, this trend has allowed most countries to return to life as we knew it before C-19. Yesterday, the emergency committee met for the 15th time and recommended to me that I declare an end to welcome up emergency of the international concern. I've accepted that advice. The organization declared the C-19 outbreak to be a public health emergency of international concern in January 2020, about six weeks before characterizing it as a pandemic. So this was right when everything popped. I remember January 2020, really March 2020 is when the world just completely turned on its head. Things shut down. They're talking about mask mandates and everything else. And a lot of things that they did back then as part of the so-called emergency have been proven to be ineffective at best 
ineffective at best, maybe even harmful, maybe even harmful. The whole thing with the vax, we know that has some issues with it. We know about that. I don't got to go too far into detail right now in this video, so I digress. The whole point is that a lot of things were done in the name of a so-called emergency that have at best been ineffective, at worst have been outright harmful to us all over the world, not just in the U.S. of A., but all over the world. But anyway, a PHEIC creates an agreement between countries to abide by WHO's recommendations for managing the emergency. Each country, in turn, declares its own public health emergency declarations that carry legal weight. Countries use them to marshal resources and waive rules in order to ease a crisis. Waive rules, huh? What I read when I read that is deny you your rights, suspend the Constitution, do whatever they want to do, like in China, where you get welded into your house because they're trying to keep the virus from spreading. Same thing in Australia, beating you in the head with a bully club because you're outside by yourself, spreading the virus somehow, okay? When you're out there fishing and there's nobody within 1,000 feet, uh, 5,000 feet, a whole football field of you, and then you get approached by some police talking about, hey, why are you out here with no mask on? Stuff like that. That's what they mean when they say they, they, they suspend certain rules, Okay, waive rules in order to ease the crisis. A lot of the rules they so-called waived, just like I said, it just impeded upon our everyday rights as citizens in our respective countries. The United States is set to, the U.S. is set to let its C-19 public health emergency end on May 11th. Okay, I thought Biden already said that it was a wrap, so I guess we've not officially ended it on paper, but I thought he already said it was over with. That's interesting. Anyway, C-19 continues to spread. The virus is evolving and remains a global health threat, but at a lower level of concern, there's still a public health threat out there. And we see that every day in terms of the evolution of the virus. Okay, whatever. Just a bunch of nonsense here. Uh, where, where's your man Anthony Fauci at? He's pretty much hiding in the hole, ain't he? You know, well, not really. I saw him on television the other day. But is he going to speak about this, about how the C-19 emergency is over with? Is he going to talk about that? Is he going to apologize for the things that he recommended? No, because we saw him talking about, oh, I didn't shut anything down. I was just agreeing with uh, CDC. You already saw that. So he's already trying to wash his hands of responsibility toward what has happened here. All right. So let's see this. There have been more than 765 million confirmed C-19 cases since the start of the pandemic, according to WHO data. Only 7 million people have died. Europe has had the most confirmed cases overall. But the Americas have reported the most deaths. About one in six total deaths have been in the U.S. Okay. Uh, one in six deaths have been in the U.S. It's interesting. We only have about 5% of the world's population. I think that's right. But one in six deaths have happened in the U.S. I wonder why. Is it because of the obesity rate in the States? We have all this modern medicine, access to drugs and everything else. Is it because of the obesity rate? which is the chief factor in people dying as a result of this thing. Maybe just maybe, why isn't it a big deal over in Africa where there's not much medical help at all for the majority of the people where you have really squalid conditions and everything. Why isn't it a big thing over in Africa or South America or like Indian subcontinent? Why isn't it a big deal over there? China's a different story because they got all kind of other stuff going on. But why is it so big here? Let's just put two and two together and get four, shall we? Cases peaked in December 2022 as Omicron. Remember, remember Omicron? That nonsense. Hitting the Western Pacific particularly hard, but billions of vaccine doses have been administered globally and deaths have remained far below previous peaks. I thought I thought the vaccine, you know, they, they said it just, it's, it's supposed to prevent hospitalization and death, but you're still going to catch it. So it, it's just weird. It's just weird. All right. But that's, that's that, you know, there, there's more to the article. Tedro says it's over with. So I guess it's over with now. So I guess we could just let bygones be bygones, right? All the things that were done as a result of the emergency, which we know have not worked. Like I said, at best, they were ineffective. At worst, they were harmful. I guess we could let bygones be bygones now, right? We can just move right on past that and pretend it never happened. I don't know about y'all, but I don't think I'm going to just let these things go. As a close, I want to say this. Let's not do this again. Let's not shut the world down again. Let's not let them 
on the outside, World Health Organization, Anthony Fauci, anybody in office, Republican and Democrat, let's not let them shut us down again. Look, the virus is out there. We know what it is. You take risks in life. You should be allowed to do that. Okay? People weren't just dropping like flies when they came in contact with somebody. If that was the case, no shutdown was going to do anything anyway. A virus that deadly would not be stopped by your high school football jersey over your mouth, fashioned into a mask. That wasn't going to help anyway. So let's not do this again. Let's live as free people and remain that way forever. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How do you feel about this whole situation with the C-19 pandemic and the global emergency, all of that now coming to an end? But they still say it's dangerous. Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. I'm glad we're finally past this, at least from this level. And hopefully this news wake people up that are not awakened yet. A lot of you guys who are watching this, you already know what it is. It's like preaching to the choir. I understand you guys understand what it is and how this whole thing was uh, largely nonsense. But hopefully people that are still sleeping, still wearing their mask to the grocery store are able to just say, you know what? Maybe the things that we were told back then weren't true since it's no longer an emergency. I'm still told it's still dangerous, but yet we're past emergency status. Hopefully they see this news and wake up. That's my wish. If I had one wish to ask for, but whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.